Don't talk the talk if you can't walk the walk. Sharon Hornell from here in our idiom, our expression, our proverb today that we're going to explore is don't talk the talk if you can't walk the walk. So this expression, this idiom has been really popular for over 200 years, but it is first noted and published in Ohio, an Ohio newspaper, the Mansfield News on uh, June of 1921, published an article about Howard Herring, who was at that time the uh, head of the North American Watch Company. And they used this expression to describe him, that he was a man that talked the talk and walked the walk. He was a, a great example of a leader was the point of the story. And that's when this expression actually had been around for a long time, but it really took off and started to morph and be used in different forms. You know, uh, we talked a couple of days ago about walking a mile in someone else's shoes. That's a good example of how to be a good leader. Be empathetic. Understand where other people are coming from. <coughs> Cough when you have to. So let's talk about what does this mean? It means don't expect people to do things that you tell them to do if you're setting the exact opposite behaviors, if you're exhibiting the exact opposite behaviors. We've seen a lot of this in the last year and a half with COVID regulations and different political regulations and different areas and leaders are uh, providing and prescribing policies and procedures for the rest of the population, yet they are getting caught time and time again, not following the own procedures and policies that they put in place. You know, uh, there's, there's thousands of examples of that, but there's definitely hundreds that have hit the media that it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing for a leader to say, do as I say, but don't do as I do. And, and uh, you know those examples. And if you don't, then you're not watching the right media and you're not seeing the right outlets because there have been literally hundreds and hundreds of examples in the media of people, even on, I think, mainstream media has hit a couple of those and shared a few of those because they've been such blaring examples of uh, different leaders, you know, California, Ohio, Pelosi, Pres President Biden, uh, of, you know, wear these masks and then they get caught without masks. Uh, don't get your hair cut because the salons are closed, but I'm going to go get my hair cut because I'm so important, you know, <laughs> even the cabinet and, and the <clears throat> people are, are flying, you know, John Kerry's flying around in private jets because someone like him deserves to fly around in private jets. But the rest of us, we have to, you know, have clean, green energy. So it's that two sides to a story, but the rules are for you, but not for me because I'm so special that that sets us up for failure and makes people lose respect for us. It's a like doing what you say you're going to do, being true to your word, being a person of integrity means <laughs> you hold people to accountable to standards, but you also hold yourself accountable to those same standards. So what are three quick ways that we could use in our business or in our life or in any organization to demonstrate talking the talk and walking the walk? I don't know about you, but if I'm a parent and a grandparent. If I were to behave in ways that were consistent with how I expected my kids to behave, then I can't really get mad when they behave the same exact way that I do. Here's an example. If you drink alcohol at a certain level, but you expect your kids to never drink, if you get tattoos, but you tell your kids never to get tattoos, that was one when I was growing up. Ears pierced, had to wait till I was 18 because my parents didn't want me to get my ears pierced till I was 18. So my 18th birthday, what did my best friend and I go out and do? She dragged me out to get my ears pierced. At that time, I, I probably didn't even care about getting my ears pierced anymore because I'd gone so many years without it, which was, I think, my parents' plan all along. But my mom didn't have pierced ears. She still, she still doesn't. She still doesn't have pierced ears because it was against their beliefs and their ideas of what, you know, in the era they grew up in the 50s. So <clears throat> do as I do and as I say is, is what we want to demonstrate. If we're a leader in any way, shape, or form in our life or in our families, in our organizations, anywhere. So what are three ways we can do that? What are three ways we can walk our walk and demonstrate and be consistent with the things that we say? Number one, set the example. Set the example and be the example of what you want to see in your organization, in your business, in your life with your kids as parents, in the world, right? You can make this as big as being an example and setting an example in the world of the behavior that you want to see other people exhibiting. If you want to see people and your children and the people that you work for be more kind and more caring and more open and honest, then you need to be more kind, more caring, more open, more honest, right? If you want to see your people work harder, but you're 
<clears throat> you know, in the office an hour a week or an hour a day, you know, two days a week, how are you expecting people to have a strong work ethic and work hard? Uh, I always prided myself on working harder than anyone else in my organization. Why? Because I want people to know that it was okay to just do what they were hired to do, but it was also okay to contribute more and to do more, whatever felt right for them. And, you know, if you weren't working less than you were supposed to, and we were setting the example to do the best you can, that, that those people didn't last in the organizations I was a part of very long. Number two, what's another way that we can guarantee that we can talk our talk and walk our walk? Do what we say we will. Be consistent. Be true to what we say we're going to do. Keep our commitments. If I say I'm going to do something, even if I change my mind and I decide I don't want to, do I just change my mind and then back out on my commitment? No. If I say I'm going to do something, I absolutely positively move forward and I do that. Uh, in little ways and in big ways. It's when we start giving ourselves permission to, to let go of and break our commitments in little ways, it becomes, and we give ourselves permission to break our commitments in bigger and bigger and bigger ways. So do you do what you say you're going to do? Do you make a commitment and actually stick to it? I will admit when I was younger, I said yes to everything. Everything that people asked me to do, I would try to find a way to do. What did that do? I got a lot of stuff done, but it also got me burnt out. It got, had me saying yes to things that I should have passed on or said no to in the first place. And I learned <laughs> that you can't do everything. You have to pick and choose. So be more consistent and stand up for yourself and say, no, I can't do that. I can't commit to that right now. So that people know when you do commit to something, you absolutely positively will do it and they can count on you. People have to be able to know what to expect from you and count on you. Make sure you're sharing your expectations with the people that you interact with and work with and that you're finding out what their expectations of you are. Number three, treat people the way you want to be treated. The golden rule, right? Treat people like you expect to be treated. If I expect to be treated with dignity and respect, guess what? I treat everyone with dignity and respect. I don't tell people to do one thing or expect them to behave in one way, but then I break the rules that I created and I behave in a, a different way. If I have an expectation in my organization that everybody needs to be to work on time unless it's a huge extenuating circumstance, then I sure as heck better be on work on at work on the time I say I'm going to be there too. Doesn't mean we don't have variable start times and things, but we're consistent. People know when they can expect to find us. We're setting the example of what we want to see in the world. Uh, number four, this is just a bonus one that I learned in corporate America and it's carried throughout the rest of my life because I learned it through a negative experience with other people is under promise and over deliver. Give value in any way, shape and form that you can. Give great value, don't just give a little value, give great value. You cannot possibly give away everything that you are, all the value that you have because you're always creating more value in yourself. You're always learning and growing and creating value. I think there's a, a bit of a scarcity thought in our world that if I give away all my information, then nobody will work with me. Nobody will buy from me. Nobody will want to do business with me. And that the truth is, that's absolutely the opposite of how it works. The more value, the more we share of who we are and what we have to offer, the more value we give to people, the more we positively impact people's lives, the more attracted to us they are, the people that we should work with, and the more they want to be a part of whatever we're doing. So I found that under promising what I can help you with and what I can provide in any one of my businesses and organizations that I've ever been involved in and over delivering, maybe over delivering, it's different in different situations. Over delivering might be I, somebody orders a special custom order of ravioli for an event and they want it in uh, 10 days. It's their events 10 days away and we can deliver it in, in two days. That is uh, and we'll, we say, hey, yep, we'll get it to you for sure by this date. And then we go ahead and we call them. We say, hey, we've got your order ready. Would you like to get it early? They get it eight days early, a whole week early. They're excited. We have under promise because even if something had happened and we didn't deliver it till the day that we said we would deliver, we were still able to meet our commitments, which is a big part of talking the talk and walking the talk, walk. If you say you're going to do something, if you make a commitment, you absolutely positively stick to that. Unless... The extenuating circumstances are such that everyone on the planet would understand. You know, if you make a commitment and you get COVID, nowadays COVID is a good one for everybody. If you get COVID or if you 
uh, can't travel or whatever because of outside extenuating circumstances, you, you explain that to people as early as possible. You let them know because if people are counting on you, it becomes a ripple and a chain effect. And you don't ever want to create negative chain effects in the world. At least I don't want to. Do I sometimes uh, inadvertently? I'm sure that I do. But I, I try to not. I try to do these three things. I try to, to set the example. I try to do what I say I'm going to do, meet my commitments. I try to treat people the way I want to be treated all of the time. And I under promise and over deliver at every opportunity. Any business, anyone, any one of you, if I can do these things, you can do these things. Anybody has the ability to do these things. It's just, do we choose to? Do we want to? Do we want to be a person that is seen like Howard Herring to talk our talk and walk our walk? I, for one, say yes, I want to be that person. Love to know your experience with this idiom or any versions of it. You know, walk the walk. There's a lot of shorter versions in corporate America of this particular one. Uh, be the change you want to see in the world. Uh, things like that. Those are related expressions and related idioms, you know. Set the example for other people. There's lots of, of expressions around that as well. That's it. Have an amazing day. Love to know your experience with this. Share in the comments below or direct message me. And I, of course, will be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom. We're doing like 100 days of Proverbs beginning of 2021 just to give us a little kickstart for the year. And then we'll see where we go from there. Uh, otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow. Take care.